Hello, happy Wednesday. This is Abby with the Fairport Public Library and I've got another craft for you. Today we're gonna do a technique that I have always wanted to try but never have. So let's get started. So here's what you're gonna need for today's craft. You're gonna need some photos. These are not actual photos, they're copies made on a laser jet printer. You cannot use a real photo or this will not work. So you just need one that is copied some Mod Podge. I have actual photo transfer Mod Podge, but you can use regular Mod Podge for this as well. Some pieces of wood. I got these at a craft store and a paintbrush. You'll also need for the second step of this, a rag that you can use that is kind of older, nothing really nice that you wanna keep really nice um, to scrape the paper off. But that's everything, so let's get started. So I chose a couple pictures here of me and my fiance and I'm gonna put them on here. One of these I'm gonna use for a Christmas ornament later. Um, they could also be used as coasters, whatever you'd like to do with them. So I took the photo and when I was in the Word document that I put it in, I flipped it because it is gonna be the image reverse. If you are doing this and there's words on your pictures, make sure you image reverse or they're gonna come out backwards when you actually put them on the piece of wood. So I flip them both around so that they mirror the original photo. And the first step is to just put a nice thick layer of Mod Podge on top of both of the photos. I'm using an old paintbrush for this. Nothing that I'm gonna be worried about having glue on, um, but I wanna make sure there's a nice thick layer so that the image really wants to transfer. I'm gonna lose that lid. All right, so. This one. So, yep, we're just going to take the Mod Podge and we're going to scrape it on there. Nice and thick and gloopy. Give it a good layer. If you miss any pieces, it's not going to adhere properly and you'll have a few blank spots, which, you know, might be a look you're going for. If you want it a little more rustic, I mean, we are working on chunks of wood. You can also do this with a bigger picture and a bigger chunk of wood and, you know, make it like something you can actually hang on your wall. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, Christmas ornament style, but you know, that's what I'm going to do. We just bought a house together and this is going to be our first Christmas in this house. So I know it's just September, but I'm thinking ahead, you guys. It's not every day you get a new house, you get to figure out how to decorate. All right. So now we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I've got two different pieces of wood here. I've got a birch piece and just like a other wood piece. I'm not really good at identifying trees except for birch. So I'm gonna use the birch one first. So I'm gonna take this photo. And if you remember, our faces are a little bit more on this side and you can actually see it a little bit better um, when you're flipping it over, I'm just going to place it on the wood. Now I've got an old card. This is something I forgot to tell you. I've got my old AAA card and I'm going to use that to press out any air bubbles and to push it onto the wood. So if you're working on a bigger piece, um, this would be a good time to do that because you're going to have way more air bubbles than I did. Go make sure you get the whole outline. You can see as I'm scraping it, I can see it. And like I said, don't use a card that like you need or use often because you're gonna get glue on there. So, all right. So I've got that. And now is the hard part, you guys. We have to wait 12 to 24 hours for this to be finished. So luckily for you, I've got movie magic and I'm gonna do that for you. So I'll see you in a second. So it has been over 24 hours and I have let it dry. It's completely dry. Um, so I'm going to take it off of my plastic bags that I was drying it on and show you this is what it looks like so far. So the next step is to take a towel that you're not too um, attached to and get it wet and damp you can see this is the dry part. It says that we don't want it soaking wet, but it is good and damp. And you're gonna place it over the piece of wood 
and let it sit on there for a little while. You can see that it's working to get that paper level um, nice and wet. So I'm gonna leave that on there for a second and then I will be right back. All right, so it's been sitting for a little bit. So you can see that it's got a lot of water going through it. So then I'm gonna take the towel that I still have that it's damp and I'm gonna start rubbing at the paper. Now you don't wanna do this overly hard at first because you don't wanna get any of the picture off of there. But you can see the first layer is rubbing off. You just wanna be careful when you're uh, doing it at first because like I said, you don't want to um, wipe off any of the picture. So I'm just doing a general circular motion. I think some of the paper had some glue on it so it didn't get as um, colored off, but you can see the pictures coming through. Isn't this awesome? Some of the edge is coming off, so I'm gonna try to avoid that a little bit, although I don't hate the look of it. Um, it's kind of like a raw edge. If that's happening, I might do it intentionally on the other edges, just so I can make sure I have some uh, consistency. But yeah, I'm just using the towel in a circular motion so I can get off that white layer of paper. I wanna be extra careful on the faces. Trying to get all the little excess off so that I don't use that to accidentally wipe off more of the color. So there's still some paper here, so I'm gonna just pull it off. I gooped on the transfer paper pretty hard when I was doing it the first time. Probably shouldn't have done that so much because it left a lot of goop around the edges and it's kind of taking the bark off on this guy. But, you know, you live and learn. You get to learn from my mistakes again, people. Right. And like I did with the bottom, I'm just gonna extra scrub the edges a little bit so I get this kind of like um, natural edge. So it looks intentional. There we go. So there it is. I'm just gonna use my finger to get some of that extra off of there. Now, you're gonna need a top coat. This is something I didn't alert you of in the original, here's what you're gonna need for the craft, because as this dries, you're gonna be able to see more of the white layer, and I don't wanna push too much, because as you can see, it's taking off some of the the picture. So I want to try to maintain picture quality while still having us be visible. So I'm going to go get the next things that I need and I'll be right back. Right, so as you see as it's drying it's turning a little white some places so I want to do a top coat. Um, there are a few things you can do for that. You can use Mod Podge or you can use a like clear gloss finish flexible glaze. Um, I used, I always make a backup one when I'm doing the, well, I don't always. I always try to make a backup example so that um, I don't do it and show you it doesn't work mid craft. So I was working on another one. Um, here it is. You can see as my first mistakes, I was rubbing too hard and some of the color came off. But, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of cool. It's still a piece of wood. Um, so I used the clear gloss spray on this guy. Um, and so for this one, I'm going to use the Mod Podge so you can see an example of both ones. So, 
Look at that Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm not even going to like water this down at all. I'm just gonna take a foam brush and you can use a regular paintbrush if you want. And I'm gonna put it on top of this. So the good thing about the spray is that um, you don't have to see the lines of the paintbrush. You're definitely gonna see the paintbrush lines on this. But you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it look like the inside of a tree, like wood grain. So you can see I did kind of like a circular motion and had the uh, wood grain look to it. So I'm not going to do a thick coat. I want it to be fairly visible through. So I'm going to let that dry and then I will show you the finished version in a moment. All right, so here are the finished products. So I have to say I like the clarity on this one better with the clear coat glaze. This one looks a little foggy with the Mod Podge. But overall, for having it be like a printed copy on printer paper and just a slab of wood, like I'm happy with these. These are pretty cool. So it's something to try. Like I said on this first one, I was rubbing too hard and it took some color off. But you know, you can, um, it might have also been the printer that I used, the toner printer. I did not use a simple la laser jet printer. So, I mean, it could be that too. So if you may have way better luck doing this with your own um, printers, but this is something I would try again in a heartbeat. This worked out really well. So yeah, try it out. There you go, you did it. You made a really cool piece of wood art. So. I'm actually really happy with these. I think I'm gonna use them as uh, ornaments on my Christmas tree because this is our first year in our house together. Um, I might put the date on the back of the year and when we moved in and the address to our house. So I'm really excited to use them. I hope you make this craft and I hope you share with me what you make if you do. Um, show me your techniques if you learned something better than I did. But either way, thank you for joining me and I will see you next week for another craft.